and hello to my dear friends. Ah. Ah. I need to like announcement something. Hang on. Bring up the game. So that the children have a spinning idle screen to look at while I make a ping in the Discord. Bring up the game. Yes, very good. I just did another one of those schedule and game voting posts. Um, you can go and check it out. Uh, one second, one second, one second. Man, there's so many announcements in, in this channel. I'm just gonna go. Just posted another schedule and game voting poll in. Copy message link. Here, boom. If you have let me know what games you're most interested in seeing me stream right now. Why does it have this exact same UI aesthetic as Mechabellum? I don't think it does. <laughs> Was that a funny joke laugh? I, if it's a joke, Incredon, I missed it too. <laughs> Viewer who's only watched Mechabellum. I'm getting a lot of Mechabellum vibes from this game. Everyone, bing! Stream schedule interest poll number three is up! Where I just asked people what they would like to see the most right now between Sigma, Rimworld, Total Hammer 3, XCOM 1, Long War, XCOM 2, Gears Tactics, Battletech, Bexcom, Aliens, Doctor Sand, Mecha, Bellum, Stalker, Gamma, and Battle Bit. If you have opinions, Skepta says, wow, fuck me then, was one of your soldiers on the campaigns, but I guess I don't matter here either. What? <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 what? Hold on a second. Hold on a second, what? Are you, are you joking right now? Are you, are you seriously, are you, are you upset? Sorry if you're feeling slighted, Skevden. I don't think anyone's trying to fight you today. It's all good. As we <laughs> Penny, Penny, don't. As we try, we're all we're all having a good time here. We just started the stream. We're all good. No one's picking any fights. We're all good. So, oh my God, Luna, 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 Incredon. Oh my god, people are super reacting, nya posting. My life is a fucking circus right now, man. My life is a fucking circus. Yeah, I, I wasn't saying you were bad for saying this was like Mechabellum. Just, just have a little play around, it's all good. So... Solus says, we're seeing with the new Brutal AI is very tempting. It wasn't huge enough for the enemy really got their big brains installed. Yeah, I think we need to play better at Rose Sigma because the last time I played it, I was like, damn. This is ball crushing, and I'm too old to get my balls crushed anymore, but I think we need to play better. Like, I'm, I'm even thinking about playing, I mean, either definitely more Scions, but like, I gotta get faster at them, or playing even Inquisition instead. But I like seeing the votes. It's good to see uh, Mecha Bell get a lot of votes as well. Thank you, Camelot, for the $5 as well. I appreciate Camelite it. Camelot has just tipped the 5 dollars. Meow. Interesting to see, uh, sorry, I, I, we will get into the, into ba battle tech in like, 30 seconds from now, but just like, I'm just like watching the votes go up and damn people want to see Rose Sigma, it's crazy. And people, it's surprising to see X, the XCOMs not winning the votes. Though I should probably do one on Twitter too if I care about like bringing in other viewers, because a lot of the time it's also it's like, the people who aren't involved here are the people who aren't here because I'm not streaming the games they want to see, so... Where is Blood Bowl vote? I'm disenfranchised. I'm sorry, Lloyd. There was a bunch of games I didn't even put on the poll because I knew they would never win. Like, you know, Freelancer. I didn't bother putting because I know that's, that's a me thing. I know that I play that because I want to, not because it's my most popular game. <laughs> Poor Gears Tactics. That's the real thing I'm sad for. Seeing Gears Tactics of only like 10 votes, I'll never forgive any of you for that. Never, ever. 
The people just want Rose Sigma. The people here just want to see endless amounts of fucking guardsmen die. <laughs> Exodus says, I enjoy Rose Sigma specifically, specifically because of how viciously it crushes your balls. Sheep says, I mean, it's a very nice experience seeing everyone getting absolutely smashed by the Rose Sigma. Oh, okay. Cool. I thought you guys might be getting, like, bored of, like... Our Sigma campaign where I keep getting my balls crushed. But if you guys really like watching my balls get crushed, I guess it's just a difference in perspective. That's cool. Because that's definitely where to fucking go for a Sigma. Yeah, don't forget you can vote for more than once, too. You can vote for as many games as you want. You can vote for as many games as you want, yeah. Yeah, Rimworld's on the poll. Yeah, like, um... I voted for games where I referenced them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All computers can be beaten until they become true synthetic intelligence. All computer AI can be beaten. We can beat Roche Sigma too. Some of the reason I was thinking about playing in, um, not Insurrection. Um, <laughs> cur current global events got me acting up. Uh, no! Don't do that! No! No! Get out of here! Oh. It's because, Inquisition is because we would have different unit types to, um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta handle something. Different unit types to, um, god damn, get through the missions quicker with space marines and stuff. Hang on, I gotta, oh, did you do that there? You're a bad cat. Oh, I got, I was so fucking broke, but I gotta get these cats spayed. Hang on. Ah, oh, for goodness sake, I'm gonna leave the mic on. Ah, oh, god, hang on. Bad man. Chat, I'm gonna pick the- I'm, I think I'm gonna have to pick the, the game that has the most overwhelming support across the community and just do like a summer of it or something. I- we're, we're, I gotta- Man, I've been trying to get these kittens- these cats- these- they're grown up now. These cats neutered for months. We just haven't had the money. It's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. Oh, the, do not let your cats- Do not let your cats exist this long without getting it done. It's the worst. It's the worst shit. I can't read your chat right now because I'm in the corner, but it's the fucking worst. Don't let it happen. Oh, I, I hate it. It's absolutely the worst. Don't you even think about it, you. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. This is just the worst. Oh my god. Ugh. Ah. Unbelievable that you would do this to me. Your father, this is ridiculous. And now you're in the blinds. Alright, hang on. We need another subathon around here, man. We need a subathon. I don't care if it's talent, but we need a subathon around here. Is some shit gonna change? Ugh. Okay. I'm back. Is there free pet um, neuter services in Australia? Sometimes those exist in the world. We 
We have free healthcare for people, not for cats. <laughs> yeah, they, they do desire boyfriends, they really do. The council is requesting your attention. Uh, hey! Why Bernard thank and Dragon you. says just dipped 100 dollars? No more boyfriends fund. Too generous, Wyverns. Way too freaking generous. You should have waited them so you could maybe play Talisman for 24 hours. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Wyverns are dragons are making a huge donation. Actually, massive. Uh, $100. No more boyfriends fund. Thank you very much, Wyverns. These large green numbers on my screen are a comforting sight. And I have... I am... Oh, I feel faint from the cleaning chemicals. Oh. <laughs> Or from your generosity, I can't tell which. <laughs> Thank you very much, either way. My spirits are lifted. Hi, hi, very hi. Thank you very much, Wyverns are Dragons, for the hundred dollars. I'm, I'm trying not to huff, I'm not. Thank you. Thank you for that, Wyverns are Dragons. For the hundred dollars, along with Camelot's five dollar donation as well, that said meow. Uh, but thank you, Camelot, and thank you, Wyverns, for the hundred dollars. Very, 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 very nice. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, I did. <laughs> Which Inquisition faction would you go? Because there's multiple ones, what the fuck? I thought it was just the Inquisition. Um, yeah. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, speaking of getting high on fumes, um, y yesterday uh, I was out at the gas station, uh, you know, getting gas from my car as you do, Everything. and I opened my um, fuel, fuel cap and a tiny little moat-sized spider, like, crawled out and was like, Hello. I was like, okay. And I... I fueled my car, and then I went to put the cap back on, and the tiny little spider crawled back in before I could stop it. I... <laughs> I don't know what it's like to be a tiny spider that literally lives inside the fuel tank of a car. Um, I do not know what their mind is like, because that, that spider probably thinks it's like a god or something, as Jamble pointed out. That was, <laughs> what, what is wrong with Australia? You have feline spiders. Look, I mean, I'm just telling you facts that happened. Like, I'm just telling you what occurred. Thank you again, the weapons for the hundred dollars. That is so massive. Really does help. Thank you so much. Um, let's play some battle tech. Already started late, so let's get into it. I know that's what the people want. Um, Vulture. Argo upgrade high capacity power conduits. Uh, what was the last mission we did? Someone jogged my memory. It was there when I started the stream, but I can't remember now. It was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it the jungle one where the mad cat ate everything with the atlas? I think so. We have other jobs here. We're still on Smoke Jag. Yeah, we, we built the Mad Cat into a PPC LRMing monster, which does pretty good damage. We want RD15s for it now. Um, there's talk of raising 20 million sea bills so we can go buy like a factory new Helm Tech more order. Though I wonder if I even need that when you look at how good the damn. When you look at how good the damn Mad Cat is, would I use it over the Mad Cat? I mean, it, it is good to have non-XL engine mechs. Though, is the Marauder XL engine? We'd have to look into that again. We're one bot off an ECM Shadow Cat and a Dragonfly as a subject. Ah, yes. Yes, and I think in general, apart from some key stuff like already LRM-15s, we're trying to go ahead and get ourselves some uh, more DHSs too. Marauder, the new Marauder's XL engine. Um, is the new Warhammer XL engine? Because it seems like if you're gonna XL engine anyway, maybe you may as well use a Clanner mech. But then if, but then we could get like a Helm Tech, Helm Tech Warhammer don't, Hammer doesn't, yeah. Maybe get the Helm Tech Warhammer instead. Because the, the, the advantage of the IS mechs as it persists seems to be that when they don't get XL engines, they're much more survivable. You know what I mean? Whoa. Benny says I googled gas tank spider and I'm gonna warn people don't listen to this for the next 40 seconds if you have arachnophobia and the first thing that came up was how thousands of cars have been recalled from yellow sack spiders making nest in the fuel lines turns out nature is just scary whoo okay nature is scary um 
Yeah, that's great. All right. So, Solar says, Beagle, if you did have to play Mechabellum for your Sabathon, can we convince you to play Balls every match no matter what? If y'all, uh, that would probably be my Nirvana. Uh, that's probably the thing I'd most like to Sabathon, is if I could do like some kind of like insane long hours Mechabellum Sabathon over a consistent time. Um, I, you, you fuckers can just vote on whatever you want me to pick. We'll get like the, we'll get some kind of way going where you can just vote on matches like one, two, three, four. To pick quickly what what shit you want, I'll just pick it. That'd be amazing. 24 hour Mechabellum tournament? That'd be sweet. I want to play some Mechabellum. I didn't get to play any this week. I just, I just got to watch it. Hacker man, hacker man, hacker man. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I think that'd be the most fun kind of Mechabellum stream to watch. Just like, sure, it's fun to watch and be good sometimes. But it'd also just be fun to just be like, the chat just votes on what strat to pick. That'd be great. I'd, I'd love raw ass, just full Twitch integration, Mechabellum. But it's Battletech now. Um, so, next operation. We have a 2 out of 8 here, Galaxy Force. I think 2 out of 10 here, um, 3 and a half skull Tempest does not look right. Oh, you pass up so much money to get the two pieces of salvage, but it's always worth it to get another DHS. So we're going to want to do Galaxy Force, I think. Um, what the fuck else? I don't think I really want to fuck with the other ones, just because, like... Unless you're getting, like, two salvage, it doesn't seem worth the time. Uh, Tempest is just too hard for the salvage you're getting, meanwhile. Though, I mean, no, it just looks too hard. But that's just bigger clanner mechs. I could take on bigger clanner mechs. Couldn't I? Couldn't I, chat? Couldn't I do it? Maybe. I don't need to be so scared. I was trashing the clanners in these last missions. I could do it. Oh, I, I, I could maybe do it. I'm thinking about the lake mission, Benny. I am. Yeah, I'm thinking about the lake mission. I'm thinking, what if all those mechs were heavies and assaults instead? Um, I could, I could try it. It is, it is too salvage easier with money. Let's start up with Galaxy Force, and depending on how Galaxy Force goes, we'll see how confident we're feeling. Because I'm not sure, like. I'm not sure if it might even be easier to kill the heavies and assault clanners just because they can't initiative game me. But as always, I think the big thing comes down to map. It really just depends. If I get a bad map against two skull clanners, they could wreck me. If I get a really good map against four and five skull clanners, I can wreck them. Because, you know what, I hate to say it, folks, but really at this point, all it comes down to is, is can we keep distance on the clanners? And I don't think it matters what kind of enemy we face, unless we suddenly run into an enemy who can you know, deal with our sensor lock, long range cheesing and ECM strategies. It doesn't really matter what you bring to the field. Unless I get cornered on the map, I'm just going to outrange it. You know what I mean? Um, that That's that's what daddy thinks here. Put turtle in. Nothing can, it's like, it's like a shoot com in XCOM. Nothing can kill you if it never sees you. It's just, it's just, it's just how it goes. You know, it's just, just how this, that's how it be. It's how it be. That's how it be out here. Um, no sensor lock evasive instead. It's okay to not have sensor lock, considering you're the one being sensor locked for most of the time, I guess. So you could hop in here, um, Ham Solo, to run the Mad Cat. Um, do I not usually have more of you for this exact purpose? Man, Corgi could actually. No, you haven't got Master Attack. Never mind. Silence, silence. Corgi is a dervish pilot, as is Blinky. I have a lot of pilots for this kind of mech, um, because that's what it was in the early campaign, but now it's mostly all about master attack. Uh, I guess Hem Solo goes in the Mad Kitty here, and yeah, there's no sensor lock on the Mad Kitty, but I think it's okay, because the Mad Kitty... We have a... Well, no, sorry, there is sensor lock. What am I talking about? What, what are you actually lacking? Bulwark. You don't have Bulwark, right. That is more of a problem. Oh, Jason's here. I miss Jason. There you go. Sorry, I don't know how I miss Jason. There you are, Jason. You can you can be in the Mad Kitty. There you go. I don't know. I had a I had a senior moment there. I'm sorry. Um, we got that Mustang as we love to have. 
on this destroy base operation. You wanted the train Jason to be your madcap pilot anyway? Y did I? It would make sense considering Jason uh, with the athleticism, yeah. Uh, Jason is the most athletic mech warrior pilot we have. It is true. Time to rename the Mad Cat to the Blocknator. I don't think it is time for that, actually. Slink says, for outranging, is there a potential problem with simply getting too much incoming meat and then closing the fire range and overwhelming you? Only if we get trapped on the map, that's the thing. Like, yes, if there's too much meat, all running at once. But the AI seems to really, like, not understand that it's cool to, like, charge you all at once. Something that Rose Sigma's AI does understand. And does now with Brutal AI. Um, <laughs> um, funny, funny story, too. I really want to install single-player Tarkov again. Because multiplayer Tarkov has just gone down the fucking trash hole. Um, BSG is just doing the dumb fuckest shit ever. Uh, forever. But uh, our friend Solarent, friend of the stream, and brave opinion haver... Uh, has returned to single-player Tarkov modding and has made a brand new, super amazing, cool uh, AI mod for SP Tarkov, and I kind of want to play it again. What's BSG doing now? Just dumb shit. Uh, we're going to launch. They're just doing their usual shit, and the Tarkov community is being the usual Tarkov community, where I've seen, like, a Twitter thing where BSG, like, on... Like, they did... They literally did the deploy bad news, deploy good news smokescreen, like, on one day in the week, on, like, Monday. They were, like... Oh, um, we're, we're now gonna, like, ban the game accounts and flag and try to get, you know, copyright banned the YouTube accounts of any personality or person who tries to leak, like, data mined, quote, information about our game because it spoils the fun for all the players. And so the player's going, like, what the fuck? Like, your game is only playable because of these people giving us the information you refuse to, like, what fucking ammo does and shit. Or that you change, like, the pen of a round, like, in, in, without saying so in a fucking, pa uh, you know, hotfix patch. Um, so then, everyone was obviously complaining about that, and being like, yo, oh, we won't stand for this, fuck you. And then, like, three days later, they did another tweet that was, like, um, just, like, the head Nikita going, like, oh, uh, t EFT API, like a thing that I guess would allow more integrations or whatever, and websites. And everyone's just like, oh, big eyes, hype, rah, rah, yay, good. And I saw like one person going like, hey, unban that guy you banned for that thing. Everyone else is already fucking forgotten. No one gives a shit anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one gives a fuck. There's no fucking unity. There's no solidarity in that community. Completely fickle. But she's got a new hat. <laughs> but um so so it's just going down the shitter but oh it's this map but you know our our my my actual enjoyment of tarkov originally just came after failing to let the mp game for ages playing the sp version that solarant gave and then solarant spent a long time not modding it anymore and now solarant's back i might try sp tarkov again um, with, uh, his new bot bots. They look really, really good. Anyway. What are we gonna do here? Where do I want to sit? We were just saying how the big thing is the map here. Now, I don't have any map to push back on. We always, like, tend to spawn in these corners like this. This over here is like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We want to get over to here ASAP, I think. This is like some room to move, room to schmoove. Could Urban be bad now because we can't long range PPC from outside loss? It can be worse, but Urban still has long sight lines when you can find it like this. So we want to like schmoove over to the right ASAP. Got it. Get that ass moving. Titty, titty, titty. Get them titties out of here. On my way. Got it. Let's go. Confirm. Contact. Orders. Coordinates received. I really love convoys, like not just in Battletech, but any game. Does anyone else, does anyone else think convoys are so cool? 
Like, when you see, like, a whole bunch of, like, fuckers rolling, like, together on their way to do some shit like this. I love it. I think the music helps. This is one of the best tracks. The Urban Warfare expansion music they added to this game is, like, there's only, like, two or three tracks, but they're the hardest fucking tracks in the game. They're so good, I think. Brassicus says, yes, but I also hate the ambush convoy missions. That's not what I meant. Lowboy says, hell yeah, I love staring at ants. <laughs> That's not... Right That's also not what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, Lowboy? <laughs> right, um... Sonic says, put three and a half hours in the SPT after they hit rules. Honestly, if the Battletech fans were not starving right now, I'd be tempted to be playing it all day today. I Yesterday reminded me how much I love that game. I want to play SPTF. I want to play Investor Planet 2. Fuck you! You little shit! Oh, y'all are talking about, like... Like, games and shit. I just mean, like, as a vibe. Like, when you just, like, you're watching a movie or something, and, like, the SUVs are all packed together coming around the corner, or there's, like, a whole bunch of, like, dune buggies or Humvees, like, going over shit. I just think it's cool as hell. It's, like, intimidating. I love it. Yes, Commander. Commander. You don't see ants in the line, I think, convoy? No, I think ants! Let's... Wait, that's wrong. I was about to do it wrong. Jumping. See if I can kill your ass in the way, seeing as I'm already... Sensors. Make sure to play armor again. People are talking about, like, armor. Yeah, I want to play armor again, man. I want to install armor again. I want to get down to the rats again. I, I missed some tactical espionage action. Orders. But you can watch that one scene from Sicario in Jizz's fucking pantsuit. I'm literally thinking of that scene from the movie I never saw. I never saw the sequel because it looked kind of shitty. But, um, I'm thinking of that scene from Sicario too. yeah, where the fucking Black Hawk comes in and shit. Hey, Sicario 1's pretty fun to watch, though. In Sicario 2, yeah, that convoy gets fucking blasted, I'm pretty sure. The sequel's not great. Yeah, the sequel just looked like an excuse to shoot more guns, but, like not do the parts of Sicario 1 that were actually interesting beyond just being like a tactical jizz fest. It looked very much like a, oh, every... <laughs> it like, Sicario 1 was about like other shit and then it's that fucking Gundam meme of like, whoa, cool tactical operators! And then Sicario 2 just looked like it was gonna be, man, people really liked Josh Brolin. Um, and... Fuck, what's the other guy's name? Guillermo or something? The main guy? Like, oh, we should just do a whole movie about them, like, being tactical. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm too old to, like, think that's going to be good now. On it. Benicio Del Toro, sorry. I thought Guillermo because I thought of um, Guillermo Del Toro. I, I always get the, 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 their names confused because they both have Del Toro in it, right? Receiving you. I forget which one's Benicio and which one's Guillermo. But Guillermo's the guy who comes out with his little fucking mystery box of secrets um, and, like, does some weird pervert shit about it. I remember now. Okay, Mad Cat come to here. I think I should be out of range of most of the turrets. Huh? You haven't seen that on Netflix, Light Boy? Sorry, you, you're too busy out here fucking watching ants, apparently. Sorry. My bad. You don't even know what the fuck's going on. Okay, I'm just gonna run you up. Gemo is the one who uh, right. is friends with Kojima. <laughs> Kojima's mate. Kojima's friend, Guillermo del Toro. Do you think if I go here, I'm safe from the turrets? This is the big question I'm trying to answer here. I think I might get shwacked by them. I don't think it's worth it. I think we keep sprinting. Guillermo has that sick-ass house of all the wax statues, yeah? Oh, we're out of range of everything. Awesome. Okay, it's time for you to die. Orders. Orders, kill that thing. 
I love how fast the Mad Cat is. What the fuck? You're tiny, right? Yeah, you're a tiny little baby. Just die. Okay, you're not that tiny. <laughs> but you're smart enough to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> smart enough to be like, hell no. Holding for tactical advantage. I swear, clanners are the only ones I've seen actually be smart enough to leave. I never see IS lights retreat like this. It, I, I swear, you never fucking see it. Roger. Oh yeah, I forgot we switched the PPCs on the Atlas. Critical hit, Commander. Location confirmed. We're all stubby now on the Atlas. Ooh, I want that, right? Shadow Cap. They've got a sensor lock on me. I need one more piece. Thank you, Anchordon. I'll always respect you for keeping track of that. Thank you. Receiving you. Thank you so much. What's up, boss? I want to kill that little fucker. Is that electrical? That's coolant. I don't care if you coolant me. Coolant this dick. Oh wait, that's not good chances to hit. Okay, come to here. Hey! -o! See ya, motherfucker! That's a kill. Oh shit. I didn't deserve that. That wasn't nice. Yes, Commander. Got it. That was mean to me. Don't do that. Let's just, uh, sensor lock you. Got a lock. Oh, this map is just the other map, but in reverse. I see now. I didn't realize that last time I played it. This is just the, um... This is the attack and defend map. But when you play it from this direction, it feels like the destroy base map. But if you look at it from this direction, it's actually just the attack and defend map. And that's why it's so wide over to this side. Now I see. Ah, I didn't actually know that. Yeah, Capellan Car Park map, yeah. I actually didn't realize. Ready for orders. Okay, it is time for this mech to explode! This should be good. <laughs> what is that, 45 tons? Get the fuck out of here. 45 ton coffin is what it is. You're never one coming in from the side. Are you talking about freelancer lore again, Incredon? Liber Liberty space lore? I'm still trying to think of how to get you in a freelancer, Incredon. Like, you're, you're resistant to get into it. I need to give you more boats. If I give you, like, a spaceship that looks kind of like a World War II destroyer and it has, like, an Idol Master skin, will, like, that get you into it? Let's let more of them come closer. Waiting for the right move. Good to go. I think if I come to here, um, I'm pretty like line of sighted. Oh, it does reveal the mag cap. The mag cap should be at a um, loss as well, just from the slope. That's a. <laughs> I already know that's a Thor, right? Are you both Thors? No, Thors are seventy, um, not sixty. But Thors are the ones with that weird bug where their model is in front of their sensor. See, he's on his vulture. Let's see. Yeah, you're right. So I guess vultures have it too. Oh, mate, don't do that. This is 70 tons. Thors, yeah, Thors are 70 tons. Yeah. For a minute, I thought you were telling me, like, the vulture in front of my eyes was 70 tons. I was like, what? It's it's right there. I can see it. <laughs> what? No, it's not. Oh, 
Nakara says, if you guys like boats, have you considered Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail? I don't know. In Crudon, have you considered Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail? Bought it. I feel like people lately are, like, saying weird shit like that. Like, they're like... Someone I feel like was trying to sell us on, like, Ultimate General Gettysburg the other day. It's like, what? Commander. Okay. What's that? Another little Koshi. Oh, the Yak 2! I actually want one of those! Cool! Once again, tricking me out of taking double heat sinks. I will never get double heat sinks as salvage, it seems. I'll just never be smart enough to do that. Lifting off. Sensors locked on. Ow. Yak two, Chica, what are you talking about? You'll need ten Yak twos eventually, uh. Yes, I eventually will. It's time to kill this thing, I think. Heading out. Perish. Here it comes. Back destroyed. Incredible says World of Warships is also a travesty right now. Submarines that outcompete modern subs, Gauss airplanes, jets, no way, <gasps> jets. No AA, more aggressive pay to win and fuck more players, so that's fun. Man, if only anyone could have seen that coming of World of Warships. I'm sure Incredon thought about that long and hard before they <laughs> helplessly got addicted to the game because of me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Incredon. I'm sorry that happened. Waiting for the shot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Real McDyson says, sounds like they need some more classified information to help them fix their game. Yeah, it works for War Thunder, right? God, that's the wildest shit. Ready for orders. <laughs> you're laughing, you ruined your Kronon's life and you're laughing. I am. <laughs> I am. I am doing that. Got a lock. <laughs> Up high. Ingridon deserves it. Ingridon does not deserve it, and I will not hear that, even in jest. Ingridon is one of the people who deserves such things the least in our entire community. That's from 36. I'm not even- I don't even care. It'll be dead before it ever sees me. Yeah. This is the state of warfare we are in it here. Whoa. It doesn't matter what weapons it'll have, because it'll be dead. Because God foolishly passed the clanny RPPC down to the inner sphere. Ready for orders. And this is what they do with her gift. <laughs> Scored a critical hit. Orders. The hell, Alice, didn't you shoot that fucking thing last turn? But now you can't. Copy that. <laughs> Cranial says, this is my first Battletech stream. Why is Pull Block piloting one of your mechs? Oh, uh, uh, Raffle. Everybody who got raffled into this game got to pick their own pilot. Standing by. That's, that's really the, the start and the end of that, basically. Jason is. That's that's not Paul Blart, that's Jason. Yeah, that's Jason, okay? Roger. God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, you've kind of come in at the back half of the Battletech campaign, where I've been hesitating to say it because I've been waiting to get smacked, but it's starting to feel like this whole line of sight sniping strat may, may have us, like, coasting on, like, a 10-year victory lap. Sometimes interrupted by missions where we are dropped in a corner with nowhere to run. Yep. 
I think the AI just cannot handle this at this point. I, I think they're just too fucking... They're too simple to, like, know what to do next. Kona says, Are there ever any, ever any missions that punish you for not bringing close-range weapons? Well, the funny thing is I bring the Mustang, too. But, yeah, you could say those ones. But even then, like, it's not so much punish. Like, ERPPCs work at close-range, too. Waiting for the shot. You haven't seen Clan Assault yet settle down? I mean, I've seen... I, I have. I have seen Clan Assault. That's the thing. I have fought Clan Assaults and Clan uh, Heavies. That's why I have some. Pathfinder says, And now for your consideration, a Gauss rifle from across the map that will instantly delete one of his mechs. No, 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 no. Like, don't get me wrong. The Clanners have better long-range firepower than I do. Don't get me wrong. They have better mechs, better long-range firepower. They could delete one of my mechs like I'm doing to them in a single turn, easily. But nobody can do anything if they never see me. Do you get what I'm saying? It really doesn't matter if the Kraken exists with 55 billion UAC-2s. If it never sees me, it just fucking dies. <laughs> but Jedi says, and this is why ECM nonsense is shit. ECM helps, but honestly, if I didn't have ECM, I'd just be sitting back here. ECM helps, but it just comes out of the map. ECM honestly is good because it just lets us do it at closer range, but we'd just be sitting back here doing it anyway. The AI just doesn't understand how to deal with this, I think. They just, they don't know how to deal with this. They do not know what to do about having this done to them constantly. They don't know how to group up in one big lance and just rush you. They don't know how to rush in together and sensor lock one target first and have the rest focus that target. They just do not know what to do about this. You can only cheese like this in half the mission types though. What? One, it's not even cheese. It's just tactics at this point. And two, wrong. What mission types can you not do this on? Yeah, it's not the mechs, it's the AI, exactly. It's not the mechs, it's the AI. The clanners are very scary, but the AI just cannot handle this. And I will take losses, but it'll only happen when the map forces me into a fuck situation. Defend base, stack and defend ambush convoy. Ambush Convoy, no. Um, attack and Defend, yes. I would agree with Attack and Defend. And Defend Base, yeah. They're, they're a bit more. Aye, aye. Let's kill you. Waiting for orders. Understand, chat, when I say it, I'm not trying to say it like, I'm the best ever. I've defeated Battletech forever. And you're like, okay, Beagle, settle down. I'm actually just trying to be like, Mm, maybe we've hit, like, the content, like, soft finish of Battletech, I'm starting to wonder. Uh, week by week is all I'm saying as a streamer. We might have hit, like, the end of the challenge in most missions. Uh, like, m for moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. It might be time to think about other games to take up the time slots. What do you need? And to call it, like, a soft win. Yes, Commander. Hmm. Good to go. Dung, 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 dung. I, I can just back up. Up high. Wait, why, why, why did I do it like that? I'm so stupid. Oh, I did that back. Ready for orders. Oh, yeah. Commander. Let's move. Waiting for orders. Boop. Acknowledged. Triptych says, so what you're saying is you just don't feel the same rush in a campaign unless every single game has a slight potential of absolutely devastating you in ending the run. I mean, kinda. Magenta Wolf says, I feel like you could also just choose not to use this strategy. I feel like, and I mean, I mean, no shade, Magenta, but I feel like, not just you, but like the number of times someone suggested to me that over the years, I should really just make a command. Like, that should be in my FAQ of like, why that actually isn't a solution to stuff like this. As we talked about yesterday, Valiant's Dark Descent. Just not how it works for me, sorry. Commander. I'll sum it up again here, because you weren't there for yesterday's conversation, but basically... 
If I'm in a game where the fun is being tactically smart and strategic and outthinking and improving my skill, and I get to a point where the only way for that to really continue is to start playing shittier on purpose, then I'm probably just going to play a different game instead. It's not really for me, you know? That's why you, people used to say that of XCOM, like, Oh, why don't you play XCOM with, like, only four soldiers? And I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> why the fuck would I do that? Why don't I go, like, nail myself in the cock of a stapler? Like, I don't, I don't know. Why don't I try to cross the street with a blindfold? I don't know. I, I don't, doesn't sound fun to me, personally. Waiting for orders. Alright, let's try and hit you, I guess. Not only because it doesn't make it as much um, fun for me, but then also, if I eventually then take losses doing that, it always just feels stupid. Because it's always just like, oh yeah, well I lost, but I wouldn't have fucking lost if I wasn't playing like an idiot on purpose, you know what I mean? It's really a lose-lose. Either you keep winning and it feels kind of hollow, or you lose and it feels hollow too. Receiving you. That's why I just play it as it lies, yeah. Salty so says Phantom Brigade was a bust, and apparently there was like a 70% layoff post-game launch. Oh, Jesus, really? That's horrible. I didn't know that. That's really horrible. Engaging jump jet. Oh, that's really horrible to hear for them. Haven't posted any update past the fourth hotfix. Oh. That is horrible to hear. But yeah, um, I mean with games, I, I think what we need to instead learn to do as we mature and as I've matured as a streamer is don't be sad when a game campaign is kind of like over. Be happy that it happened, you know? Like there's so many other games to play. We always come back to them in the end. You know, I think it's good. I think the, the most immature thing we can do is expect any, especially single player game, to last forever. It never will. Um, without new development and modding. Um, it's... You're always going to hit that point against an AI where you just kind of got them fucked uh, in a tactics game like this, I think. There'll always be some way. That's what I've learned over 10 years plus. And that's fine. You know, I used to be a younger person who would be like, I'm always looking for the forever game. Gotta get that forever game. I don't... You know, I, I've learned reality at this point. You have a good time of the games and then you, you know... Then it's time for the game to, to go back and have another nap. Maybe you play it again in the future. Have fun with the time the game's here. The, um, the amazing experiences we have. Affirmative. Wish it was more climactic end. I mean, that's what everyone always went, wishes. Roger. Everyone always wants to have the big temple ship at the end. Roger. But I feel like maybe we're getting to that point where um, I think we're kind of going through the motions a bit with Battletech these, these, these weekends. I think... I think Clanners were Commander. the spike, and I think the problem is they're a spike in stats, but not in tactics or strategy. Good to go. And I think win or lose is going to keep coming down to loss and loss and Rico. Like to see you try BTA. I've tried BTA before uh, extensively. I just it no. The the. The, the performance issues alone are annoying, uh, even, and then that compounds with the bloat of the turns. Hey, I mean, XCOM fans gotta eat. How long has Long War been sitting there? We're gonna get back to that. So this is Beagle's stop. This is gear. <gasps> oh! Thank you! Thank you, subject. I wasn't thinking. Thank you. You saved me. Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh, oh I was trying to... <laughs> okay, so to explain what was just happening there... I was trying to turn down the music by using my Winamp turn down music hotkeys, which is control and numpad enter. <laughs> Forgetting I'm such an old man at this point, forgetting that I'm in Battletech, which is not Winamp, it has its own in-game music. <laughs> and all I did was slam enter to reserve and end my turn. <laughs> 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 
Jedi Wombat says, I found Clanners a lot harder because I didn't have ECM or lots of sensor lock. You're kind of gaming them perfectly, which is making them dull. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like sh uh, shoot com. If you never get shot at, you can't be beat. Uh, anyway, yeah, we've discovered a new difficulty, senility. What win can you using? Oh, I like the classic one, man. All right, um, how do I get spots here? Standing by. Roger that. Standing by. Just reserve down until the turrets are gone. That's right. Now I remember Got how to it. do it. Yes, Commander. We just want to like jump forward a witty bitty. Hello. Brace. Bitch. No one could have seen that coming. What's up, boss? Standing by. Yep. Just gonna who we fighting? Uh, Smoke Jag. Though I'm also considering mixing it up for the rest of the day and playing some other stuff. After this one. Moving out. Maybe some Mechabellum or something, or Space Beast. Perish! Roger that. Enemy structure is limited. Mech Warrior skin for Winamp would be sick. Yeah, I mean, Mech Warrior skin for Winamp would be like... Mech Warrior skin for Winamp would be like, um... Very fitting for the error as well, you know? Yes, Commander. Like, same kind of, same kind of time. Move into position. Thank you, Ingridon, for keeping track. So just as my idea, flap and find a fire skill climb and see how it goes. I mean, I might even get schwacked by it, but even if I do, I think I think it's not even about the win or lose at this point is what I'm saying. I think it's more about the meta has crystallized. Like, there will never be a different meta. The meta is always going to be, if you can't beat a cl five clan five skill right now, you just needed more guns. I don't think it's going to be like, you know, oh, here's a new tactic to beat them. Like, we go back to jump jetting. Like, what are you going to do? You know, sit in front of the, the fuckers with... Jump jetting mediums, you're gonna, you know what I mean? You're gonna fucking brawl. I think that's what I'm saying is that, like, it's not even whether or not there's some missions that might beat us anymore, it's that regardless of whatever they do, there is one way to play this game we've discovered that just seems to be the best above all, and that way is basically stay at a loss. Because, and I think the thing is, Bexcom is a really good challenge up to this point, and that's a good thing, it's well designed, it's a good challenge, but I think it basically necessitates this because. As early as getting, like, into heavies in Inner Sphere missions, the amount of insane damage coming in just kind of necessitates the fact that you just can't really take hits. Um, and I think that, you know, you know I, I think that's because you have even less armor in this than in vanilla. Um, and you have the, the engine crits as well. Uh, it, it just, I, I think it necessitates it. When you get into hard missions with it at this point later on, you just, you have to. We tried doing the old strats, and you can't because higher level pilots will have sensor lock, and when, no matter what evasion you have, you'll just get dogpiled. You know what I mean? It's the rocket tag problem. What's the rocket tag problem? Like, everyone has a rocket, and as soon as they see each other, you instantly die. Kind of, sh kind of theory. Like, Tarkov stuff. Low, low TTK stuff. Attacking from position. Are we doing three kingdoms again? Um, I really like Three Kingdoms, but it lacks the content that the Total Warhammer 3 has. But then I, it kind of sucks, because Total Warhammer lacks the, the cool mechanics that Three Kingdoms has. I wish there was a combination. I love the dueling and family mechanics of Three Kingdoms. I was talking about this the other day, so does Jamble. Like, 3k is Jamble's favorite kingdoms, but then also if we wanted to play it together again, it doesn't have, like, good co-op, because it doesn't have the simultaneous upgrades that TW3 has. Strat says maybe you could do challenge runs like melee only or lights only, and like I said, that doesn't interest me, sorry. Fresh real estate available. Oh, Evax right here, that's actually quite nice. Confirm. Yeah, I'm a three freelancer in SPTF, also not on a schedule post. Yeah, because as much as I'd love those to be voted for, I think we all know they're not gonna be voted for as like the games that are gonna get any more than like six votes. Yeah. 
Yeah, nice evac, Samiri. Thank you. School one for us free births. says, if they only have six votes, I'm one of those votes. If Morbius only has one fan, I am one of those fans. If if Alma 3 only has one viewer, I am one of those viewers. And I respect that. If, if, if they only have one vote, I am that vote. If they have no votes, I am dead. I respect that, Sono. I rely on people like you. Sono says, actually, I'm not because I'm playing. Oh, you're playing with the rats again? <laughs> yeah, Samiri finally picks a good evac to cap it off. That, there's your climactic ending. Well, a shadow cat is acquired. More clan gausses that I turn my nose up at. Clan Yak too. Or do you just take the, the DHS? Sona says, I would be a viewer, even though I don't really want to go back because the game performance is just so dispiriting. That's the main reason, I think, one of the main reasons I haven't gone back as well, Sono, is... I just... I think about playing Armor 3 again, and I think about how fun it is in my mind, but then I remember the main thing that makes it not fun, which is the sh kind of shitty frame rate that's kind of impossible to get around. And then I think about... Well, is Armor Reforger good yet? Like, did they mod that to be Armor 4 yet? And no, they haven't. And I just kind of go like... Well, fuck it. <laughs> and then I just don't. I play something else. I play Battle Bit, you know? Uh, Pathfinder says, Rocket Tag gameplay describes any game where hitting the enemy first results in a win. So Evasion and Lost Become King, using Vexum as an example. Yeah, and that's not true at the start of Battletech. And I think that's one of the better parts of Battletech is the damage trading not being immediately lethal. But I think that's the inevitable problem of Battletech's technical progression is that Battletech's technical progression is these quantum leaps in damage output, but survivability never really goes up much. Do you know what I mean? Like, armor never really improves that much. Uh, your ability to stay evasive only gets worse against, you know, more more tech coming in and better pilots coming in. Um, Sonos says also, I love flying. We don't really get to do that very much in Beagle Missions. Aha. I agree. Like, I, I always wanted when I was doing rats more at the time to do more like Little Bird and like Hilo style missions. But it just, yeah, it didn't really come out, did it? Salty says survivability is poop. You have to get Bulwark or die. Yeah. And... It's funny because it's like the inverse problem the, with, with um, I, I prefer it like this with Bulwark nerf because Bulwark, vanilla Bulwark made the game dull in the opposite way where you would just walk up and not die. <laughs> you would just tank so much shit. Um, but, the, but the AI couldn't do it the same. They weren't as smart as you really. Um, and I prefer this still because we got more out of it, I think. But eventually, you know, it's still an imbalance where in vanilla you're way tanky and you never get the clan tech or helm tech in vanilla so you just become super tanky whereas in this you get all the clanner tech and helm tech and it just skyrockets your dps but your survivability always stays the same and you just kind of die in one hit um yeah tiberius says yeah damage training eventually becomes impossible in tactics macquarie games sold that by full control so you can exploit terrain to a speed school etc yeah if you play this game in the macquarie online it's different because basically what happens is the game becomes like a cover shooter where you could imagine like your mechs here like moving up to like a rock or something or a building and like them getting like a little XCOM cover shield right of them like going in and out in between turns um, but that doesn't really work the same way here. There is, like, hold down positions in this game of obstructed line of sight, but they don't really have that big an impact. Subject says, I think that golden period for the campaign is when we were fighting heavies in the Inner Sphere. Uh, small consideration for the next campaign. Yes, that was the peak. The peak of this campaign, I think, was that mission where um, we had that insane ambush around the giant square moat uh, urban mission, and we clinched it. Um, and I think it kept being pretty good, but beyond that point, we started to learn and perfect the, um, learn and perfect the, like, uh, long-range shooting kind of meta. And once we switched over to all master attack and sensor lock, it was kind of over. You know, it was like, oh, hell yeah. Um... 
Tiberius says, funnily enough, that's what Phantom Brigade was trying to solve. I don't think Phantom Brigade was trying to solve that. I think Phantom Brigade was like, this is a cool gimmick. Let's build our whole game around it. I think they were just like, whoa, cool, cool, like, cool gimmick. I don't think they were like trying to solve that about tactics games. I think they were just like, you know what's fucking awesome? Gundam. You know what's even cooler? Gundam with like a time travel gimmick. But, uh, yeah. Spud says, Whenever I try a Battletech game that isn't Mega, Mech HQ, Mega Mech, I'm disappointed by the lack of Vs, Jets, already tanks, and infantry. I just wish it was a game that was like Mech HQ against the bot, but the AI didn't take a thousand years to do anything. Yeah. And I think that's the problem is because, obviously, Battletech is like the only tactics game in the series. Like, okay, I guess Mech Commander, but it's real time. This is the only turn-based Battletech high polished digital board game, you know, there is, right? Like, it's obviously Mega Mech and stuff, but we're talking about, like, a, vi a really polished video game. And the thing is, like, it's just not designed to be modded into that, is the really sad thing, is j just the game itself is not well optimized at its core. Um, the minute you start modding it, performance falls apart. The way, like, the UI and the way the commands and turns go is also just not really designed to, like, throw a bunch of new units into it. Uh, and it's a shame, you know, the mechanics don't really lend themselves either, I guess, to, to that kind of stuff. It is a shame, because I think we all wanted that, or a lot of us combined arms freaks wanted that. I'm a combined arms freak, I, I wear it on my sleeve. Uh, we all wanted that for a long time with this game, we really wanted it to be like, yo, okay, I want to do, like, the combined force. And for a time in BTA, I, I, I was... I, that was novel, and I was like, oh, this is cool, like, saying that my tanks on a ridge looks so cool um, as my mechs go in. But in the end, I found it all to be just sort of a sort of an illusion, sort of just a, a vanity a vanity picture rather than anything that really felt like that way. Because in the end, mechanics of this game-wise, it just felt like having more, just more shittier mechs. Um, I think especially because of the scale and the pace of this game, it doesn't lend itself well to the pace of, like, having these much slower units like tanks and infantry exist in these kind of small tactical missions with limited tactical objectives against these these battle mechs. It just doesn't really work out. You know what I mean? It just doesn't really work out well in what this game is, and you'd have to, like, completely change what this game is in the most insane amount of effort total conversion, I think, in order to turn this into a good combined arms game. Solus says, a last strategy usually evolves to be further and further removed from actual combat with strikes coming from farther away and preventing more and more interaction until information is the defining component and the units involved become irrelevant in the face of traps, sniping, or artillery. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's where warfare goes, right? Warfare has come a long way from punching each other with rocks and spears to... I drop a fucking cruise missile on your head and you never even see it coming. To beyond that, to cyber warfare of I hack your cruise missile. Um, and yeah. Starbright Lass says I will continue to suggest playing the Lancer TTRPG, which I'm sure is a good suggestion, uh, but not if you mean it in the slot of uh, replacing Battletech. <laughs> Barley says fucking High Mars won't let me stab a fucker with a bayonet on my T80. I mean, maybe we should combine Arma and uh, Battletech. Like I've been saying, maybe we should go back to Arma, install it, put on the Battletech mods, and then see Battletech combined arms in person. <laughs> Look at the flowers. I wonder if it's not because we don't know how this would actually look like war with mechs and hyper-technological warfare. What? What do you mean? Nick says, I think we're seeing that it's where warfare goes when you're bullying. Against peer opponents, they can shoot down your cruise missiles and kill your light maneuver units. Artillery and trenches remain the kings. Yeah, and I think you you see that with when we're able to out-bully strategically and tactically our enemies, which according to chat is fitting against the clanners here who apparently hate artillery, um, is, yeah, just like, don't get seen. Um... Yeah, it's just like... Yeah, which one has ECM, by the way? Go back to Dune. La loop back around. The slow blade penetrates the shield. <laughs> Should I get BSD ECM? Cool. 
Omnimech, Ender Steel. This is probably gonna be a replacement for the Griffin finally too. Oh my god, it's got mask. Fucked up. But yeah, that's the thing, is when you get down to it, war at its most efficiently uh efficiently done. Is, uh, is not at all meant to be fair at all. War is not meant to be fair, or honorable, or nice, or fun. Uh, it's meant to be killing other people as efficiently as possible while never being killed yourself. And, in when translated to video game form, that gets to points like this, where eventually we're like, okay, I think we won. Triptych says it would be hilarious if you stop playing and later find out that this mod deliberately nerfs the clan's AI when you first meet them and improves it in later years as a sense of what's happened in the lore. That would be, yeah, interesting. Nick says, Every game has to repeatedly nerf stuff like mines and artillery because otherwise they'd be oppressive and not no fun to play against, leading gamers to believe they're not very good in real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas, yeah, you, you get a bunch of people who, like, think they have, like, a fairly, like, realistic grasp of warfare because they played a bunch of, like, realistic quotes games, when in reality it remains that, like, artillery is the shit. That feeling you get when you play, like, war game or something or any fucking game and you're like what the fuck artillery is so bullshit like i hate this it's just this isn't fun nerf it yeah that's yeah that's how it goes it fucking sucks <laughs> oh wow exactly what is it good for absolutely nothing that's right where where is that song Sitting in a trench in Verdun. Man, this isn't fun. Yeah. Yeah, as as they say. And I play it for you now. <laughs> oh fuck, I forgot the rest of this song. I forgot the Spice Girls part of it. <laughs> no, we have to play it twice, Neil Cicero. It's all right. Wait, why are we quitting? Because I think we've kind of, I think we're kind of done. I feel that like we're kind of done. I've been, I've been kind of thinking it for the past few weeks. And I think we kind of did it. I think we kind of beat Bexcom. I think we've had our fun. What next? I don't know. We're gonna pick right now. So I just says I would have loved to see my final kill count. Uh, next time. Next time I load in. No Tuki Aid. Nah. I think we've seen the end of the development of the gameplay. I think we've done it. Aliens. I don't want to play Aliens today. I still feel kind of like... Um... Shady about it from yesterday. Harry says congrats. You beat the game. Harry, welcome! How, how long did we go with Dexcom there? That was a long campaign. That was fun. Next time you load in, like maybe if I load in to check the, the records for for a subject. Thank you, Croker. Croker saying GD was great. Croker, a very, probably I think our most successful mercenary company leader throughout. Yeah, there is a new version of Squads Unleashed for XCOM. Yeah, I, we are going to play some new XCOM soon, I think, when the slots free up again. Want some space terror beast while you clear your mind? I'm thinking space beast, terror fright, infested planet, or mechabellum. Like he says, why are we quitting? What is that link? <laughs> this is this is like the opposite of why we're leaving, but I'm gonna show it because it's funny. <laughs> Real winners quit. That's right. <laughs> the, inner, the inner sphere! <laughs> That's what the clanners did. <laughs> Real winners do quit. Alright. 
We should do a poll. We should do a poll of what's next. What's next to the menu? Let's find out. But thank you again to Harry. Can we all get a, like a round of digital applause for Harry in chat who gave us Bexcom? Because I think we played that for months and that was really fun. That was a great experience. And I learned a lot about uh, Battletech lore. Thank you, Harry, for a fantastic mod. That is definitely the best Battletech I've ever played, that's for sure. That's absolutely the best way to play Battletech, for sure. I love that. That was super fun. Until next time. I, I haven't played that much Battletech since vanilla. That was awesome. I think we did it. We got the Mad Cat and we were like, you know what? It's enough. Alright, what game next? Mechabellum. Um, Space Beast, Terror Fright, Infested Planet. And it'll be a two-minute vote. And I have made the poll. Sorry, Sammy, I couldn't see you offering to make it because I was in my thing. Uh, Nudamoot says, Hey, Beaks, thanks for introducing me to the Bex mod. It made BT fun again for a while, but I have the same feelings you do about it now. It gets stale unless I purposely handicap myself. I think that's that's natural of any single-player tactics game, even Long War, which I think is... I keep coming back to it. I think it's probably the, the, the best overall expansion of longevity. Uh, and I think it, it benefits a lot from how base XCOM is so ripe for long campaigns like that. Um, and the tactical, the tacticalness of the cover system makes it much more unpredictable. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think really you what 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 the thing is with with Bex come at that point through for really no fault of their own. It's just like I think there's only so far you can make the base BattleTech AI be smarter. Um, you know, even after years, I think of people like modding the AI in different ways. The lights still do silly things like just sit there on two evasion, and you know the lances still kind of fail to like recognize they need to group up and stuff like that. It's like the thing we saw with Brutal AI over a Sigma, where someone had to go real hard with Brutal AI to actually teach the AI, like, hey, you need to work as a team. And I think that's the big thing that most tactics games that come out that you buy have a really hard time doing, is having the AI work as a unit, like, cooperatively as a team, which is why Brutal AI is so impressive, because Brutal AI teaches the AI to move as a team. Uh, they work as a, as a single unit, like there's an actual artificial commander controlling all of them. But most games, including XCOM, including XCOM, um, the, each unit just acts individually. And sometimes they like do things that are based on what other units are doing in small ways. Like they might go, oh, this unit is suppressing. That triggers my thing to go, I will try to flank the units being suppressed. But it's very rare that you see a tactics game where there's like this kind of disembodied overall AI commander who is actually making choices on what to do as a unit. Um, you just don't see that. Harry says, if you wanted to make the game harder, it would be easy to just lower the plus to hit on Precision Strike, for example, to make a big difference. No, I think it comes down to, like, the game's the game's well and truly hard until you, until it, it isn't. Whoa, Infested Planet! Big win on the polls. I'm glad you all remember Infested Planet. I'm I'm excited to play that. It's a really good game. Yo, fuck Mechabellum, apparently. What was the result? Um... But, like, Dijin says ECM was supposed to fix the RD dominance, but the AI never has or used it properly. I, I think that, like, w without, without the AI understanding how to work together as a unit, um, it's the nature of, of how AI plays tactical games against you in the way that most big publishers, big, big developers release these games. Because it's incredibly much harder to, like, make, like, a cohesive AI opponent. That's super fucking hard. Uh, it's, it's way fucking hard. Um, and, and XCOM, like, smoke and mirrors it a bit with their fuzzy logic in what their AI does. But they're also just, like, working on their own. Um, and it's, it's really impressive. That, that's why Rasigma's brutal AI, even if it, even if it did or didn't, like, make the game more or less fun, is just an incredible technical achievement. Because I've read through the, the Git release, like, the change logs for brutal AI since its inception. And the fact that it is, like, legitimately making the AI work as a unit, like, there is a brain that is making them cooperate and base all their moves off of each other's moves, is insane. You know, that's that's cool. And, like, I think that's, like, the next... If, if people cared about making the next generation of tactics games, that's where I think you'd want to go to make, like, the next generation of challenging tactical game. I don't think that's realistically something we see pursued by anyone but an enthusiast. Like... I think an indie dev or modders are the people who are going to do that. Like, right? Like, 
I don't think you're going to see like a big like publisher or a big dev do that because they're focused on making games that are for the mainstream and we are not the mainstream. Um, and most, most games, I think, I feel like most, most more casual gamers, that's not disdainful, it's just, you know, realistically, most more casual gamers than us are going to get tired of a game for other reasons and move on to something else with their time before they get tired of it for a lack of challenge or because they've, they've beaten AI. Um, and that's natural because, you know, like, uh, modern game companies, they're, they're businesses, they're not, they're not around here to push things forward, they're around here to make money. And AI is, as we talked about before, I just don't think is something that makes you money. You don't, you're not going to make like gangbuster sales on your game by putting in, you know, cool AI. Like that's cool, but it's probably not going to be that lucrative. And the the return, the effort required compared to the return is going to be a horrible ratio for you probably. But I, I think we can continue to rely on at some point indies and modders, uh, as always, as always they have, especially in the tactics sphere, to keep advancing things forward. Because the advancements required in the tactics sphere, the turn-based tactics sphere as well, are like, they're not flashy. They're not things that'll sell copies of a game off the shelves, off the digital shelves. They're not things that like a big publisher or dev is ever going to give a shit about. Um, but they're things that enthusiasts who are really into this genre really care about. And I think that's really where you, where you see it come from. Eclectic says, doesn't Gears Tactics have something like that? That's how the enemy does simultaneous moves. Gears Tactics has... Gears Tactics has simultaneous movement, but I don't know that it has simultaneous AI. I'm not saying it does or doesn't, I actually don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure that AI feels like it still does similar kind of stuff, unit to unit, regardless of the wider context. But like, Gears Tactics, don't confuse the simultaneous movement of Gears Tactics with simultaneous decision. Or not, you know, like, like combined decision, I mean. I think it's more like a very advanced version of how the Lost move in XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, where it's a speed-up thing, but not necessarily a we're working together super hard thing. Uh, Triptych says, It's funny, funny hearing you say all this, Beagle. I work on an RTS mod, and the number one thing I've done that improved the game was to make the AI use simpler builds, but randomly select which build it uses each game. Yeah, because that's one of the biggest things about these games that kills it is that when not only is the AI really cheesable, well, because the reason they're cheesable is because they never, they never evolve, they never react. Um, they, they never learn or have the uh, illusion of learning. And a lot of that is often because, that's why XCOM 2 is a lot less replayable than XCOM 1 by default, because the AI there is way less random. Like, they do the same fucking thing every time. Um, whereas in XCOM 1, there's a fuzzy logic value where they can randomly just do weird shit to mix things up. And just even though that that's the illusion of brains, right? Like that doesn't actually mean their AI is smarter, but it provides the illusion of smartness because then you can't predict them as much. And when you can't predict the AI as much, things are different. Like ultimately that's what kills the longevity against an AI of a game is when it becomes so predictable. And when that predictability lets you just destroy them as it always does. You can hide a lot of AI flaws by having it rotate through more than one AI, says Triptych. I agree completely, yes. I agree completely. Um... Uh, and Blinky says, counterpoint, a lot of the sales of the original fear was around how good the AI was, or at least perceived to be. Um, I don't know, like, I, that's hard to hear, I think, in that one small case there, although I think it was a different time. But but was it at the time what they sold on? Like, is there, like, a, like a numbers on that? Because I always heard that after the fact. I always heard that fear... I always heard that as, like, one of those stories of, like, ten years later of, like, oh, the original fear, this is when people would love to talk about how people thought it was smart at the time. Like, I also feel like a lot of fear was marketed on, like, cool bicycle kick, cool, scary, creepy girl. Not not saying that a game could never be sold on AI, and especially back then, I think, before how to market a game and, you know, the hyper-capitalism of the industry had super crystallized. Um, not, not to, like, needlessly fight on everything there, Blinky Ivor. Um, because you're right, like, everyone talks about fear as AI, and we all know the story of how, actually, it's, like, just, the, it was actually a lot of the mission map layout. Um, to, to give the illusion of it being really smart. But yeah, as Garfor says, having the AI talk is enough to make people think it's smart. Exactly, that's a big thing. Yeah. Nick says, floaters are so dangerous in XCOM 1 because the function that evaluates what tile the move to is broken for flyer units. They can just wander anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back. I'm like, going to let my boy in the bedroom. Alright, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back! 
It's also one of those things of the industry where, like, it can really backfire on you. Like, AI, good AI is not easy to make. Uh, and that's obvious to me, even as an armchair game dev, you know, said with disdain, um, content creator, game player, enthusiast. Oh, I just broke a pair of tweezers. Shit. Um, and then you can put all that effort in, in a way that, you know, even if it works as you want it to, may not even make the game more marketable or sell more copies. And then you have to consider the other thing, is that it will actually turn off some players. Like, if you make an AI that is meant to challenge people who get super passionately into your game and want to play it forever and, you know, all that shit, you may end up making an AI that's actually too smart and clever for your casual players who go like, what the fuck, this is bullshit. You know what I mean? Subject G says, speaking of XCOM, maybe you'll get into it a lot more if you off exit on your next campaign. Subject G, buddy, I think I'm pretty into XCOM at this point. Um, <laughs> I think I'm as into XCOM as I'm going to get uh, in my life. I, I think as people go in the world, I'm, I'm pretty into XCOM. I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> Beagle, have you ever heard of the game AI Wars with Sammy? I have, yes. Harry says, if you watch other streamers play Bex, you would understand why they don't invest a lot into the AI. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Tiberius says, I've heard a bigger factor in AI is actually making it dumber to be fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I tried playing AI Wars for like 20 minutes once, thinking it sounded so cool, like the first one. And then like, I played the game and it just was like... It's kind of like when I played Eve after her, thinking how cool that might be, and I was like, oh, the actual gameplay of this is not not great. Yeah, Sammy says that I've played it and found the game kind of unapproachable. Yeah, like, the game itself does not, did not grab me when I tried to play it. You can try a Jagged Alliance 2 next month. I'll look at it, but I'm not going to waste money on it unless something amazing has happened in its development because what I've heard of it coming and what I've seen of it does not look good and does not sound good. We talked about that about a year ago on uh, Long War. But yeah, it's just... I mean, it's cookie cutter, says Harry. Click to get closer, click to alpha, making themselves under PPC and LRM range. You don't understand pretty much anything about the tactical side of the game, yeah. And that's what I mean is, you know, 10 years ago, I would passionately rail about how, like, why don't people, developers, do this more? And even five years ago, even three years ago, even now at times, I will go, you know, sometimes treat myself to a bit of armchair game devin of, like, oh, why is the AI like this? But ultimately, um, I, I, as I always reference back to, I had this huge eureka moment with XCOM 2 a long time ago where I realized, oh, it's not that XCOM 2 has gotten worse in some aspects since XCOM 1, it's that I am not the intended audience. Um, the game has been improved for the casual audience. XCOM 2 was made worse for someone who likes to play Long War in a lot of ways in vanilla, but it was made better for the main audience because there's like 5% of us and then 95% of the people who play XCOM and buy it are people who buy it when it releases, play it for like a week or two, and then never play it again. Um, that's, that's the main audience for most games. And we, we here, we enthusiasts, we passionate few, we are not the main audience of games. We absolutely are not. And that's why modders and, uh, you know, indie games uh, are, who, who are like us and how they think, they they are our lifeblood in the experiences we get to play. <laughs> Sonno says, okay, so we just have to make our own games. Turn-based RimWorld, Sonno, when we doing it? When we doing it? Turn-based functionality in, I'll balance the rest, let's do it. Ah! Uh, <laughs> when are we doing it? It's the next big thing. It's the year in world. That's not the wrong game. That's a mod. That's better. It's better that way. You know, the, the game who I really do... Uh, the game who I really do want to play next is Mars Tactics. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not playing the demo that's out right now because I'm waiting for something else to play of it uh, in the future. But I really... Uh, I'm curious about Mars Tactics. Mars Tactics. Keep your eye on it. It's going to be on this channel sooner or later and on YouTube sooner or later. Yeah, Jake Solomon was just waiting for Long War 2 to come out to appease the demons. Yeah, and then the problem is, <laughs> Jake was like, Long War 2 will appease the Long War demons. And then Johnny Lump was like, nice, time to make Terra Invicta. <laughs> Johnny Lump was like, wait, what's Terra Invicta? And no, sorry, Jake Solomon was like, what's Terra Invicta? And Johnny Lump's like, don't worry about it. I don't know yet either, but I'm going to make it after this. 
they always wanted to make a strategy game and, and everything about Long War 2 made so much more sense when I heard that that like they always wanted to make a strategy game like a paradox game rather than a tactics game but they were limited by XCOM modding to what they could make can't wait for Broken Arrow. Yes, different kind of game, but can't wait for Broken Arrow too. Speaking of demons, uh, Chaos Gate had a big AI overhaul. That's cool. Speaking of, let's play the game. So people want to see Infested Planet, and let's do 